Didn't you know? Super Mario Sunshine is the first installment in the action platforming franchise Mario Sunshine, and the only entry in the series thus far to actually exist. This is because Nintendo is afraid of ruining what is otherwise an amazing series with potentially lackluster entries, similar to the way that they've handled several other franchises. Mario Sunshine is famous for introducing a new antagonist to the Mario franchise, known as Shadow Mario. Shadow Mario is a villain meant to represent all of the negative aspects of previous Mario media. This is first made clear by the weapon that he utilizes in battle, his large paintbrush. This is a reference to an obscure Mario game, Mario no Pentu Gameu, known in America as Mario Paint. The game had incredibly low sales as it actually had no painting at all, and in reality was just a beta version of what would later become Mew's score. Shadow Mario is also defeated by spraying him with water, a reference to fan frustration with water levels in Mario games. Aside from Mario, his design also drew inspiration from other series. Shadow Mario's design was based off of Shadow the Heartless from Kingdom Hearts, who was based off of Shadow the Hedgehog from Shadow the Hedgehog for the Nintendo GameCube. Out of my way, alien monster. Super Mario Sunshine has a diverse cast of bosses, unlike any other 3D Mario game. The game introduced many characters to the Mario universe who would be later included in future games, such as Mario Kart Double Dash. One of the first bosses you meet is Piranha Plant in its final Smash form, who is very clearly a reference to Smash Ultimate. In addition to Piranha Plant is King Boom Boo, one of the bosses in Sonic Adventure 2. King Boom Boo is fought on a roulette-like terrain and defeated by winning at the slots, a reference to the stage Casinoopolis in Sonic Adventure 2's sequel, Sonic Adventure DX. Another boss that stands out is Mecha Bowser. According to the Super Mario Sunshine manga, Mecha Bowser was first formed after the events of the original Super Mario Brothers, after being melted by the lava. Bowser needed to revive himself due to the fatal injuries he suffered, and was forced to rebuild his body with scraps left over in his castle. His metal appearance in Sunshine was the result of Bowser making himself into a cyborg lizard monster. The idea to have Bowser become a cyborg was based on the origin story of One Piece's main protagonist, Cuddy Flam. This is further evidenced by Mecha Bowser's attacks, which mimic Cuddy Flams, such as the ability to shoot missiles and even breathe fire. One of the most infamous cutscenes in Mario Sunshine is when Shadow Mario is revealed to be Koopa Kid from Mario Party. This is because the twist is accompanied by the proclamation that his mother is actually Peach, with the Koopa Kid referring to her as Mama Peach. What you might not know, however, is that this is a reference to the Super Mario World animated television show's 13th episode, Mama Luigi. In this episode, Luigi finds a baby Yoshi that imprints on him and believes him to be his mother, constantly calling him Mama Luigi. The reference goes even further, however, as they went as far as to add Yoshi as a playable character in Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario Sunshine boasts a large array of unique levels, but only one of them takes place almost entirely indoors. The level Hotel Delfino is where the player fights King Boom Boo, as well as several smaller ghosts throughout the hotel. The concept for Hotel Delfino was based on a previous Nintendo title, Ruigi no Dai Taitaku, known in America as Hotel Mario. This concept of fighting ghosts in a hotel was later reused in the reboot of the Hotel Mario series, Luigi's Mansion 3. One of the recurring characters throughout several of the levels in Sunshine is the Running Man, known by his title, Il Piantissimo. While no one knows his true identity, it's been speculated that he may be a reference to another Nintendo character. While he appears to be a Pianta like many other characters in Sunshine, looking closer at his model reveals that he actually isn't a Pianta at all. This is most evident through his lack of a skirt, a staple of Pianta fashion. He actually more closely resembles a character from The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Fans believe that he may be a reference to Deku Link, another short plant man who is actually a human in disguise. This theory is further backed up by his name, which can be translated from Italian to mean the very plant. This may mean that Il Piantissimo truly is a reference to Deku Link, the very plant we've speculated all along. Didn't you also know that Mario Kart Double Dash was the first Mario game to have official character shippings? If you want to know more trivia on Mario Kart and other obscure video game series, look out for the Didn't You Know Video Games episode on Mario Kart Double Dash. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to leave a like and press the subscribe button to show support. If you want the chance to see episodes a week before their release or choose what episode I work on next, consider checking out the Patreon. 
Thank you to the patrons listed in the description who are currently supporting the channel on Patreon. And don't forget to look out for new episodes of Didn't You Know Video Games.